we're at Omni Labs looking at their robot that they manufacture with printer bots. These robots are so cool. They allow you to be somewhere where you can't be. So mainly, I think family. So you can uh, use this to keep in touch with your family and it's kind of like a telepresence. So awesome stuff, awesome guys. We're gonna have a good time today. These are gorgeous. <laughs> they really, really, really look nice. Thank you. Who, tell me what roles you guys are. What do you What do you all do individually? Sure. So I'm the lead engineer, uh, mechanical background. So I help build the structure of the bot, the, the latest version, and then work on all the 3D printers that we have. Oh, uh, I can't wait to get to those. Yeah. Really? <laughs> I'm CTO and co-founder. Okay. So I started with the early prototypes, building the bots. I designed all the boards, write the software for controlling everything like that. So we had our our fair share of uh, 3D printer. War stories. <laughs> yeah, what, do you, what do you do here? Uh, so I am uh, one of the co-founders. Uh, I'm running the CEO position right now. Uh, basically, you know, easy uh, stuff <laughs> outside. And so you're saying outside. CEO is easy? <laughs> Easier than this guy that's doing the, you know, the technical yeah. stuff. I, I don't know about that. <laughs> but how long have you been with the company? So, uh, so we started... I mean, how long has the company been around? Uh, July 2015. So a bit more than a year and a half. That's wild. Yeah. You've done all this in a year and a half? Yeah. And Nine generations of robots now. Nine? Yeah. Yep. That's fantastic. <laughs> now, what do you do? Uh, so, I just joined the company three months. Uh, okay. I'm a mechanical engineering intern. And uh, I'm uh, doing a little bit of printer, a little bit of production, manufacturing. Yeah. That's cam, uh, Kanban. That's, um, so, you're a generalist. You, do, you can do a lot of things. Yeah, uh, out but very, very <laughs> <laughs> yeah, things, you know? He does the yeah. things you don't want to do. <laughs> so for this product, what we found for a lot of consumer robotics is that the challenge is that like the robots people are dreaming of would cost like ten thousand to fifty thousand to a hundred thousand dollars to build. So we said, what is the simplest thing we can do that will add enough value and we can make it at that price to get it into the market into very useful in people's everyday lives. So what we did was we you know built this concept, and now it's nine generations later. <laughs> And uh, what it allows you to do is you can connect with family that's like far away, especially in the case of when you have, uh, we find when you have like an aging mom or dad who's like living by themselves and all the family is like an hour or more away. And we found uh, that's what we've been really going after with this product and we found that it's really different because this product is substituting for like all that hassle, driving back and forth like a couple times a week, flying like, you know, once a month from like, you know, across the country to visit and check on the mom and a product like this allows you to like go there, sit there, watch a game together, you know, have dinner together. And that's, those are the experiences we found. It's like so different from Skype or FaceTime like on a tablet, right? They'll just hold I was going to say, minutes, how do you differentiate you know? from yeah. like, me putting my phone in my yeah, hand? And, yeah, like... yeah. Yeah, you surprise a lot of elders the things they do with tablets. You know, you teach them, like the first thing is sometimes they don't charge it in the first place. They don't like, you know, you play IT support all the time. Like, hey, what are you going to do? And then when they do use it, it's like on the table, they stand And over. you're looking up your nose. Yeah, yeah, yeah like, my oh, mom did that. Yeah. <laughs> it's just bizarre. <laughs> There. Like, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Now, how do I keep? From, how do I look down to see if I'm going to so roll? Use, or so this is the downwards camera. Yeah. Oh, okay. Or you can also, you know, look up and down. With all, all right. right. So, all right. I'm going to move the speed up. Yeah. I'm ready to all graduate. Right, go for it. Yeah. What do you usually run? Uh, I go 160. Oh yeah, is that a challenge? <laughs> <laughs> of course, a lot of times that the elder parents like to give the robot a hug, but he can't hug back. So, you know, you want to be like, able to hug it. Hug it. Hug it. Yeah, like, oh, you got a nice one. There it is, yeah. It's crazy when I was standing just now, like, I'm only a few feet away from that. It looks production. Uh, you know what I mean? It looks, like, it looks like injection yeah. molded. Now, I'm not saying that I know you could, now when I get close, I can see the lines. Mm -hmm. You could print even higher resolution, but there be, begins to be a trade-off in time yes. and energy. Yeah, yeah. yeah there is. Yeah. Um, and so do you want to just talk geeky for a second? What, like what resolution, how long did it take? That's a point 0.2 layer height, and uh, that, point so two. we'll say like that white part takes about 10 hours to print. 10 hours? Uh, printer bot plus, yeah. And the bottom part, it's about the same. Dude, that's too long. Yeah. That's too long. We we got to share some secrets. We're using, <laughs> All right. We're using bigger nozzles, like a lot now. What size nozzle? So it's a point four. Point four, yeah. And so some of our parts, we actually need that for like some of our gears and things. And our no, printers. sure, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you whoever's running your printers is you and. <laughs> <In> mine. <laughs> you did a really good job. 
I mean, it's funny too because what some people say, you know, like 10 hours for that, but you're not standing there 10 hours. You just mm. click it to run. Yeah. You, you've optimized your parts and yeah. they reproduce pretty. I mean, well, don't get me wrong, you don't have to tell me anything about my machines because I know it all. <laughs> 3D, 3D print, what I'm saying is some people are like try to be nice and, and don't want to tell me that sometimes they break down and stuff. Yeah. If you use them on 10 hour prints over and over and over, there's consumables. Yeah. Yeah. The tips okay. and the, even the hot ends, the power supplies, everything will break yeah. eventually yeah. if you use it enough. Oh yeah, we made some careful upgrades too. I can't, I can't, <laughs> wait, to see, I can't wait to see. Yeah. Yeah. Well this is great, so this is printed and this is printed. What on here is printed? Oh my gosh, I can't believe This is anodized aluminum. Uh, yeah. This is actually a polished version, and that's uh, be blasted. But I mean, this is, I can but see it now. This is, this is gorgeous. Yep. I love your choice of materials. So, so the, the idea yep. is uh, whatever we can buy off the shelf, we'll buy off the shelf, and then we'll do the integration part, which uh, probably would, you know, three printed uh, part. It's almost all the plastic yeah. in the robot is 3D printed. And so, yeah. And we design it for 3D printing, we print it here in house, and then. It's right there. Yeah. Aren't there moments yeah. where you regret making that decision? No. Really? <laughs> really all know. that we gain out of it, all the trade-offs that make sense. Have you bought injection, have you done any injection molding yet? In the past, we've done some. Yeah, yeah, but, not, yeah. but did you pay for it out of your own pocket? No. <laughs> <laughs> that, there's where that, the difference happens. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's yeah. It is so expensive, but like, just, I, I got guys hmm. from interns to like guys with junior experience to got to me designing parts alongside each other and it, it's all happening very fast. So it's great. Right, right, yeah. I love that you're doing this. And I wonder if there's, I wonder if emerging, you guys are kind of proving it. The reason I wanted to come is because this is actually happening now and I haven't really seen it a lot in the past. I was doing it, you know, six years ago with Kickstarter, but I sucked at it. Like, I was really bad at it. I mean, I really was. I'd be embarrassed to see some of the printers that I, printed parts that I sent out six years ago. They were low quality, ABS, like sketchy printers, and you know, it all kind of worked in the end. We got better and better, and we went right to wood, and then metal. We tried injection molding, and now we've come back around full circle to think, wait, th there is some really great stuff that the printers can do to manufacture parts. Golly, how many hours of printing is represented in this whole deal? Yeah, what is up? the latest estimate about uh... total number? Yeah, we'd have to add it up. But basically, it's um, what twelve Two? printers yeah. a day to print this bot. Yeah, twelve printers. Wait, say that again. Twelve so printers one day will print this. About Twenty-four 18, hours. 18 hour, about eighteen hours. Of, yeah, yeah, about eighteen hours. The cycles switch over time. Yeah. Okay, so eighteen hours of printing. Right? Yeah. If it's 12, so 12, yeah. If you you you're saying 20, 12 times 18 yeah. is how many hours? Yeah, yeah. That's, a, that's a lot of hours. I'm feeling, <laughs> I'm feeling pretty good about our little smalls. <laughs> 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 that's a yeah. lot of that's printing. A lot of printing. Yeah. Everything, yeah, you'll see later all the pieces. Oh my all gosh. Layers, so all the me mechanisms, even like, like the, said, the belts, the pulleys and the belts, printed. everything is printed. Like, you guys are either on to something or you're insane. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. It's like you put the parts right on. Did you, get, did you get a picture of this? <laughs> you know that the full set is here because they're sitting right on top yeah, of it. Big of like on visual inventory type thing. So <laughs> I love that. That's yeah. good for QC. Yeah. Yeah. So how? Kind of Fifteen printers. Yeah. Why did you choose printer by in the first place? Who made that choice? <laughs> I guess that was me, yeah. That was before I was Why? Was it just... So, bed size. Bed size. The Plus was the one that was uh, the only big enough to print some of the larger things, like tablet mount, you know, some of the bigger pieces. Okay. There's a big difference. Um, the auto leveling, those two. So we learned, you know, auto leveling has pros and cons always, yeah. but, uh, you know, definitely the, those yeah. two, the idea of being able to, you know, there would be like, without having to like, you know, calibrate manually all the time, all that stuff is huge for us, right? So. <laughs> yeah. One thing we've changed or upgraded, I'll say, is uh, the wiring goes on it, or the extruder. Uh, they actually go over up the top and use a split tubing to help keep it Got kind it. of secure. Now you only, you, you do PLA, and this all this filament, you don't, you, how long does it last here? How, how long is it out in the atmosphere? Not that long. Not long. So, yeah. It's fresh. Less than a week. Yeah. It's yeah. fresh. Well, and actually this room, so well, it we takes a few sort hours, of do it. Yeah humidity control a little bit in this is room it? and a little bit and yeah, actually the fact of having all when all the printers are up and running all the heat beds are yeah. on it's quite warm in this room actually 
gets real a lot of yeah. humidity in here. I'm just being California helps too. So. Sure, sure, yeah. sure. Would you go, I mean, when I was talking about the enclosed printer, does it outfit like yours think, ooh, enclosed would be nice or no appeal? What do you think? It depends on the filament. So I think, like, uh, heated bed. we don't have an issue. The heated bed's huge yeah. for us on glass. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if we want to upgrade filament types, I think no. I think for us, a lot of it's also yeah. like the printer density. So how many printers we can fit into a certain mm -hmm. area. And right. like, uh, especially, you know, we're saving space for maintenance access and all that. So it depends on what. I think we like the idea of the consistency of what I enclosed. Yeah. Thing, but if it does take up a lot of space, you know, to us that might not be a trade off. Yeah. We want to Probably stay open, to be honest, because if, you know, if we don't have that need to like go. Well, you could get. Smooth, uh, like opening and closing. Yeah. Closures, well, it's, it's harder to with... get access to maintenance. Uh, yeah. Where do you get those spools? Spool holders. Uh, Hatchbox makes them and oh, we really? modified them to split. So these are like their double ones and we added these washers on. Yeah. So we can just like take it off, put it on. Normally, there are these on both sides, so that caps it, so that's yeah. trapped, and you gotta do this, so you can see we can just yeah. 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 Like, manage your filament, come on, that's like job one. That made me fail so many prints so. early on, you know, I would do that, I still do it today like an idiot. But that is right. the number one thing you can do is get that filament up and out of the way. I, I love taking time to go to bot farms because it's the guys with the most experience. Mm -hmm. Like, the most man hours of printing is here. So you're failing the most equipment, you're having the most problems, you're solving those problems. It's the right. best information for me. It's great.